Bhagavan. Maybe that is the the limit to which any living creature can go, including humans. That's, that's number that's one. Yeah, yeah. It, it's possible. Number I think two, that's reasonable, yeah. I think okay, that's... the other thing is Sidra. Sidra is probably a end point between a Makan and La Makan. Mm -hmm. Something that is created and then beyond that, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's nur and nothing else. And, and that may be the lotus tree, the symbolic mention where even Gabriel has to stop. So these are the concepts that are um, kind of uh, there with us, but um, but to to explain it and get a real kind of a concept as to what they are, to me it seems that the ex the reach of humans uh, is probably beyond uh, the reach of angels. So this this may be the reason. He has called it that celestial bodies stop there, the angels and others, but humans can go beyond. This could be that, or right. it could be that even humans are up to that point, and then ajaha, because they have a soul in it, and uh, beyond that, it's just out of reach for everybody except whosoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. Jazakallah, beautiful. Thank you. Hmm? I, I, I agree with you. Okay, thanks. MashaAllah. Kabe Jibri Lejan Ha Sidrei, Kabe Abdul Butun Shud Sofrei, the Kaaba of the slave of the stomach is the tablecloth uh, that, that's covered with dishes of food. That's the fun. Banquet table. Yes, banquet. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good word. Banquet table. I like that. Uh, good uh -huh. translation. So, yeah, so again, over here, it's it's Abdul Butun, um, literally translated means the slave of the stomach, right? But 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 this could be broader towards the yeah. whole the dunya, right? It's, right. It's more than just food, um, money, greed, um, uh, all of that in general. So the qibla of the arif. You know, the Arif Billah, the one who has special knowledge uh, given to him or her by Allah. Gnostic, G-N-O-S-T-I-C. Yes. Mm. Uh, the, the Qibla of the Gnostic is nur -e visal the light of, of union, union with God. Yes. Becoming connected with God. Qibla-e-Aghle mufalsif shud khiyal. So the Qibla of the the intellect of the philosopher is uh, fantasy or imagination. So so this is interesting. Uh, if if you read Molana Rumi's poems, um, he always not that he's against the aql and intellect, but he talks about how there's a limit to how far you can get um, in your nearness to Allah if you just rely solely. Uh, on the intellect. Not change. only that, in this hayal, he's really explaining also, like you, you mentioned already, fantasy. Not that it may not take you to the point where you are supposed to go because it has a limit, but also it may misdirect you. Yes, exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Take you somewhere else. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And 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 Molana Rumi does, he, he talks a lot about this in, yes. in different different verses he likens he likens uh, the the aql uh, in in uh, to to a man who whose feet are made of wood who who tries to walk with wooden feet um and, and the limits and difficulty of walking um with with legs made of wood mm. So Kabe Mardan Haq Amalnik. So the Qibla of Mardan Haq, the men of truth is Amalanik is good deeds. So the Qibla of the men of truth is not good. not Qibla Kaaba here because that is the ultimate desire. Yes. The difference of Qibla and Kaaba. Kaaba, sorry. Yes, you're uh, right. Yeah. The, the, what they actually want to achieve. Yes. Yeah. 
Yes, yeah. that's Kaaba. Mm. So the the Qibla of the the um no ahl jahl the, the ignorant right the the qibla of of the ignorant is dead stones i know he, he should have said qibla ha he said qibla na that makes confusing qibla ha would have been better no. well yeah qibla ya na ahl na ahl no oh na ahl right okay right <laughs> somebody who somebody who how is incapable it? incapable of who's unworthy Unworthy, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Qiblayana ahl jahl murdeye reek is dead stone. Qiblaye ta libbovad hissu khiyal. So the the qibla of the seeker. Of the seeker, yes. <laughs> now we got our word in. Yes. Qiblaye ta libbovad hissu khiyal. Uh, the Qibla of the seeker is his, which means uh, feeling and khial. Khial means uh, imagination. Yeah. imagination, yes. Yes. Qibla ya ahla hawa kufro zalal. So the Qibla of the people who, <coughs> sorry. Worldly people, you can say. Yeah. Hawa. hawa is people that are yeah of their environment or circumstances mm. yeah or or also we would like have all will have us like refers to lust and worldly desires right oh, i see okay uh, so so qibla ahla hawa so so the qibla of people who are are of of worldly desires is kufr right is disbelief and zilal loss qibla mm -hmm. zahid bovad faizan nazar so the Qibla of the Zahid or the, the ascetic um, is Faiz in Nazar. It means to reach the benefit of, of Nazar, which means to, to see, to, to, get, to get to see the, you know, the vision, to achieve the vision of Allah, right? Um, so, 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 so that's the, the qibla or the ultimate, the, the ultimate goal of, of the, the zahid or the, the ascetic. So the qibla of, of the, the greedy one is himyanizar, which means a, a sack of gold. Okay, can I, can I just go back to this qibla his zahid? Please, please do. Uh, zahid is the worshiper, zahid is who who prays a lot. Zuhud is ibadah, right? Right. As a nazar does not mean he wants to see it. He wants somebody to throw a, a, a vision of mercy on him or her. Mm -hmm. So he is seeking. Oh, he's sorry. Yes, you're a right. The person who can enable him to see God. Yes. Okay. As a nazar is somebody with a good, good uh, right. character, good, good amal looks at him and prays for him so that he can become yes, a yes. sahab sahab nazar one with vision but he's looking for a faz faz is something that you get secondarily not by by your action itself but somebody gives it to you that's faz so yes. so somebody else who is pious he gives you that capability he grants that through of course with permission of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but that's what awliya do that's yeah. why people with 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 sahab nazar, people with vision, they make you see things that you would otherwise, by by your own worship, may not be able to achieve. So that I think is a finer point in there, but it's good to yes. know that sometimes yes. a person totally illiterate and really not knowing how to pray properly, not even knowing how to make wazu, yet if a, somebody with 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 uh, with vision comes to him or her. Mm -hmm. can grant him that ability that they are really already way at the last stage of Ihsan because of Faz and Nazar, because somebody looked upon them with an eye of uh, grace and mercy. Jazakallah. No, that's that's beautiful. Yeah, we, we say that in, in Farsi. We say, uh, that's one of our duas. We say, Khudaya bimon nazar kun, right? Ah, right. 
Yes, thank you. Dr. Saab, can I interject here for a second? Please, please. please. Uh, and I know, I don't know much, but I, I see Chef Mendes is here, so maybe I'll ask him. So, uh, you know, oh. I think the right, correct word here is the glance, probably, you know. The nazar is a glance. A and there is a lot of, uh, from what I've heard, there is a lot of uh, literature on the nazar, on the concept of nazar, and especially in the Sufi uh, earlier tradition, that... Uh, you know, and there's a lot of kawalis about it, that one nazar, one glance is enough. And yes. the, the history of this probably, and maybe somebody can correct me, goes back to the concept, uh, the story in the Quran of uh, the Prophet Suleiman, uh, you know, uh, Suleiman, uh, when the hudhud came, and the hudhud was just a seeker bird, he was a seeker, but when he came to the court of Suleiman, all Suleiman did was give him a glance, and that's how the knowledge was transferred from Suleiman, uh, from the Prophet Suleiman to the Hudhud, to the Hupu. Beautiful. And obviously, and, and I just wanted to bring this up. That's because beautiful. I think, that's exactly what it is. Glance, yes. Uh, but uh, I, I would love uh, other comments by other people, and especially by Sheikh Mendes, if, uh, yes. if, he, if he does so. So, I'm alaikum, Sheikh Mendes. <laughs> He's probably muted. Oh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I'm just uh, benefiting and listening. And Alhamdulillah. If I have something to say, I'll, I'll share. But thank you, Sajid Bhai. And Alhamdulillah for inviting me to speak. But no, Alhamdulillah. I'm just listening. And Maulana Rumi, uh, he's the teacher. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> <laughs> We can't add to it. Jazakumullah <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. Sajid, why this also reminds me of a verse, one verse in Urdu, which I'll translate also. That verse says, Ye faizan nazar tha, ya ke maktab ki karamat thi, sikhaye kisne Ismail ko adab e farzandi. When Ismail alayhi islam bowed down to his father's uh, orders that uh, I want to sacrifice you in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because I have seen it in a dream. This child, Ismail, obeyed and gave, you know, was willing to give up his life. Now he says, was this a fazan nazar or was this something that he learned in school or anything? So mm -hmm. you don't learn these things in school, but this was the nazar of his father, who was a, of course, a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That that by itself, by looking and realizing who is telling him to do what, he obviously had absolutely no hesitation in offering himself to be sacrificed. So that was a fazan and nazar. So it's basically the same thing. The glance yes. is enough. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Kiblaya Surat Parastan. Yes. Kiblaya Surat Parastan. Chu Bosang. Kiblaya Ma'anavaran Sabro Derang. Kiblaya Zahir Parastan. Ruya Zan. قبله باطن نشینان ظلمنن so قبله سورت پرستان چوب, چوب و سنگ means the قبله of the, the face or the form worshippers سورت پرستان is چوب uh, و سنگ is wood and stones قبله معناوران uh, the قبله of those who seek meaning uh, is sabr patience Va derang um, is is uh, patience and and uh, long suffering. Manavaran is all who know the meaning, <clears throat> not they are seeking. They already know. Noktawar means one who knows the point. Manavar is somebody who already knows the meaning oh, as to why. Know. Okay. No, thank you. <laughs> no, that's that's true. You're right. Yeah, because these are the accomplished people. That's why I'm saying Kiblai Mana Waran. These are the people who know the meaning of their worship. They have patience. And like you said, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Jazakallah. Kibla mm -hmm. Zahir Parastan Ruyazan. So the Kibla of uh, Zahir Parastan, those who worship the Zahir or the, the exterior. The um, tangible, tangible. Mm -hmm. Ruyazan is is the face of of a woman. Qibla batin nishinan zulmanan. The the qibla of 
those who reside in their in, in the interior a domain is dhulmanan right uh, which is ya dhalman right one of the the names of allah he who is uh, who 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 is bounteous um so uh, alhamdulillah uh, over here i saw there was a a comment uh, when hazrat Mawlana rumi speaks about woman or women it is only meant metaphorically as it refers to the lower self or nafs uh, so so i guess one can sort of look beyond uh, the meaning of of ruyazan uh, to mm -hmm. something deeper yeah so so yeah, that uh, this uh, concludes the fifth rivulet, which was about Hajj. Um, the next one is about Jihad. Uh, and I don't know, maybe we can, if we want to stop here and, and maybe have a discussion about this. I think we should discuss this because Brother uh, Mendes is with Imam Mendes is with us also and others. And this is a very interesting topic because I think uh, we have talked about Nazar, we have talked about Qibla, and we have talked about Kaaba. What is the concept of Qibla? What is the concept of Kaaba? And what is a Nazar? And then if worship comes into this versus the, the blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a good topic. I think every one of us should express an opinion from whatever their understanding or experience is. And we'll all uh, gain from it uh, rather than having uh, you know, too much of... Uh, um, uh, reading by us, I think we should really learn from from uh, comments that are made, just like Brother Sajid made and others. So I I agree. Yeah. Let me start then. Okay. Sure. Be basically, Kibla is your intention, and is Kaaba is what you want. Okay, so it doesn't mean that everybody who's praying will really uh, believe that his prayer uh, will take him where he wants to go. So that's why your intentions are good, but intentions uh, with sincerity take a little while, take commitment, take uh, sincerity. And with maturity of age, of course, you can learn more and more. Uh, Kaaba is basically what you are ultimately uh, trying to achieve. Here it will be in union with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or, or uh, forgiveness from him. So um, this concept uh, is it's, it's fairly unique in Islam uh, because these, these uh, entities, are I don't find them anywhere else. Uh, forget about the church bells, forget about the blowing of an horn and all that. These, when you say, you are basically asking people to turn your face towards Qibla and ultimately uh, Kaaba and then the Sahib Kaaba. So that concept is, is very, very deep and I'm sure people with knowledge can expand on it. And then we can talk about Nazar also. Okay. Let's hear from somebody. Maybe it's all clear and there's not much to be said. Who knows? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Ah. It's also maybe a good opportunity. I'm sure that most of us, alhamdulillah, have gone for Hajj. Mm -hmm. And this may be a good reflection that, you know, before going to Hajj and while in Hajj and coming back from Hajj, what was own respective emotional state at that time? And you know, exactly what you were thinking when you were leaving and what was the experiences you faced. And I think since it's intense stuff, yes, that there are rituals focused when you go for Hajj and all these seminars are all around the rituals mostly, as, as most of you all know, I'm sure. Uh, I was when I was leaving. Some a friend of mine suggested I should look at the book of Ali Shariati, which had been helping a lot, which is beyond the rituals. So you know the rituals and what is the substance, the purpose of the Hajj. So while you're there and you're thinking of that, and it has a whole different meaning for you in that relationship. But at the same time, I was talking to a number of people, you know, while in Hajj because they're from all over all over the world, 
It was so interesting to see that how each one has a unique, you know, dream about this place. And that's true that we we looking, people are there physically to look, be in the ritual, but behind that ritual, everybody's coming with some sort of a, you know, they said, I've been all my life, I've been dreaming for this day. You know, people have been, these stories of people from small town villages and all that, it was fascinating to listen to them, to see what made them come here and how they ended up here and how the whole village has collected money for them. They could never even dream to come. And, and people who are just looking at the television, these Hajj and will, will cry all the time that why not me, Ya Allah, because I can't afford. And how arrangement was made for them because of this intensity of they love to be there. So I think the more you think of this relationship of each one has very unique. And yes, I mean, it, he lays, Rumi lays the ground for it in terms of what is the ritual and what is behind the ritual. But when people are focusing on the, you know, monastical hajj to make sure I don't miss thing, well, that's true, that's happening. But I think each one also has, has some, you know, I'm sure most people have this relationship. I can only take back something with me. And I hope that experience would, um, would help to bring that change uh, because that's, that's the closest you are getting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what I see. So yes, you think, but that's, Emotionally, physically, you're in a place and you think I'm in a, in a house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that relationship getting close and you come back and you want to keep that close to you. This experience of your hajj. I'll leave it at Beautiful. that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, mashallah. Uh, that book, uh, the, uh, the hajj, by uh, Ali Shariati is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful companion to take when you make Hajj, mashallah, um, or Umrah even. He, he really goes deep. He really goes deep into the realities and the, the inner dimensions and the significance of the rights of Hajj, the rights of Umrah, uh, in a way that uh, I don't, you know, you haven't. I haven't come across in, in you know before, mashallah. So I really encourage you. Thank you, Tahir, by mentioning uh, Ali Shariat's book, mashallah. And um, I think you know one of the things that came to my heart is that Maulana, uh, rahmatullahi alayhi, Maulana Rumi, he's he's teaching us what the what Hajj is really about. And you know I think we've. I think many of us have lost that understanding. We we go to Hajj, we go to Umrah, and you know we, our focus is on the rituals, but not on the transformation of our Qibla and our Kaaba. You know, uh, it's we don't spend uh, we spend a lot of time, you know, going to the, making Tawaf and making a Sa'i, and you know, and if it's Hajj, you know, we're you know going to Mina and Arafah and stoning the jamarats, but, but we, and we spend a lot of time doing ibadah, right? People do khatam of Quran, you know, people doing lots of dhikr and salawat and qiyam al layl you know, making several umrahs sometimes. People make five umrahs, you know, for loved ones. But uh, I'm not speaking about my own self and, and, you know, some of the groups that I've taken. We don't put aside time to really look at what is my qibla. You know, and what mm -hmm. and how can I change my qibla mm -hmm. to the only qibla that's worthy of being the qibla, the only mm -hmm. Kaaba that's worthy of being the Kaaba? You know, is my qibla food? Is my qibla dress? Is my qibla dollars or bitcoins or cryptocurrencies? Is my qibla, you know, my intelligence? Is my qibla my fame, my fortune, my family? You know, what is my Kaaba? And so. You know, I think this is missing, you know, from our Hajj. And the second part of this is Maulana is t telling us that even if you're not chosen, like uh, Dr. Abdurrahman is saying, even if you're among those who are not chosen, like Otahir Bai was saying, to make Hajj physically, this Hajj you can make right, right from New Jersey or, you know, Staten Island. <laughs> or, <laughs> That's a good you know, one. You can make this Hajj. You can, you can examine what your priorities are in life. Yeah. And make, inshallah, with Allah's help, uh, make the proper 
uh, changes and so, or, or at least strive towards doing them. Alhamdulillah. And Allah knows best. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, Jazakallah khair. Uh, th- this yeah, is Amir with you, if I may. I know, <laughs> I know it's Amir. I know your voice. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> you, you know, I think that this concept of Tibla and Kaaba is, is so deep because there's sort of a paradox there because, <clears throat> you know, we all have the, the same Kaaba uh, that we're facing. But of course, the Qibla, the, the, the technical direction, uh, differs depending on where you are. Uh, the, and so, Dad, remember, Dad, you, you were telling me the story mm-hmm. uh, a couple of weeks ago about someone who, uh, he's, who lived in Staten Island who was praying towards the West. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> be, be, because when he, where he grew up in, in, in Pakistan, for the Qibla was the West. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so he was under the impression uh, the, or in his mind, the Qibla is the West uh, until he understood what the Qibla is, you know, facing towards the Kaaba, depending on where you are, it's a different direction. Uh, and that had not been inter- kind of mat- internalized in his heart. Allah uh, Allah. So, but that, I mean, that's just so deep, right? So meaning that the goal of the force is God, the goal is Allah. Uh, but in each situation, sometimes it's different. Sometimes you need to show uh, mercies. Uh, many times you need to show mercy, compassion. Sometimes you need to be firm. Sometimes you need to be, um, you need to, to give. Sometimes you need to withhold, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, but it's towards that same, uh, the same end point, which is the pleasure of God. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Beautiful. Very nice. <clears throat> Let's, let's admire Rumi's choice of words here. He has referred to a, a Khizr of the time who told this, uh, this traveler that you can circumambulate around me and leave your money here and your Hajj will be accepted. So he brought that concept into it. Rumi brought that concept that if you do good and do charitable work and wherever the need is, uh, then uh, that good charity, that, that work, that charitable ac- action also will count as Hajj. Then I think somebody had mentioned the story about someone who was seen doing Hajj. Actually, that person was not physically there. And the people could swear by seeing him or her doing Hajj and Tawaf and all that. They said, we met with you there and this and that. And yet, that person never went there. So there are those <clears throat> examples given to us whereby Hajj is done by people without them being there. There is a story about Iqbal, about somebody came from Srinagar, Kashmir to see him in Lahore and he wanted to see his face and he actually came and saw him and he just started to become very emotional and tearful and Iqbal said, who are you and what is going on? I'm an and he says, no, I had, I had heard that about you and I wanted to see you, what your face looks like. And somebody told me you are in Lahore, so I came to see. And he, <clears throat> he says, how did you hear? And he said that so-and-so told me that, and that they used to see you in the prayer in the first line behind the Holy Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Medina Sharif. That one day, <clears throat> somebody saw the dream and they said, is Iqbal there yet? And they were waiting for you to come to pray with them. And uh, I saw the face and all that. And I wanted to see if this is exactly you. And that is the face of Iqbal. Now, regardless of how <clears throat> much we can believe into that story. And yet, this is fairly documented that uh, things like that do happen. So, Rumi, bring that concept in, then he brings in the, the lust of the world versus uh, versus the actual truth and where our face should be. Then he brings in and the benefit that we can get by from good company by talking about the nazar, how nazar can benefit you. So he brings in all these concepts into hajj and, uh, and then he basically uh, gives the total concept that it's much more than than uh, than the <clears throat> designated actions that we have to do. Uh, I would be a little reluctant to call them rituals, but 
yeah, they are kind of that. And yet, uh, not everybody is doing it ritualistically. <clears throat> um, there are <clears throat> gradations of people that are making pil pilgrimage. Some probably are very young and totally uh, unaware of what they are doing. Some may be in a type of age of life when they have other responsibilities that are really uh, on their mind and they cannot think of worship and worship alone. And there are others who have, mashallah, uh, come to a mature life whereby they understand these things. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a mixture. And each one of his, those people in the, in the Hajj is teaching the others. You learn from each other also, and uh, you, you see what others are doing. And uh, there are good examples, and there are some that may be teaching you not to do uh, what they are doing. So all of that is manifest right there when everybody is dressed similarly, and there is no difference of rich and poor, mashallah. So he, I'm just amazed as to how Rumi has uh, put this all together without leaving any element of it out. Jazakallah khair. You know, uh, if I may add uh, one example uh, slightly that I've heard my father give mm -hmm. is uh, on the concept of Qibla and Kaaba. So, you know, once you connect, he gives the example of a wireless router, you know, for the internet. Mm -hmm. So basically, if you have your laptop, doesn't matter which part of the house you're in, as long as you're connected to the internet, mm. <laughs> right? Beautiful, yeah, that's a good example. As long as you're connected to the internet, doesn't matter what, what you're doing, you know, physically, you may be yeah. doing something else as long as it's exactly. in Ram, obviously. But if you're connected to the internet, you're connected. The minute your connection breaks, that's oh. when you have to re, re channel. So I thought it was a good oh, 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 oh. Yes, yes, for five minutes. And that that is beautiful, mashallah. Very nice. Yeah. That, that 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 brings the point home. And, and subhanallah, when you connect to that router, then you can go anywhere. Yeah. Subhanallah. Yeah. Deep, very deep, yeah. very deep metaphor. That's what it is. Whichever turn you society you turn, you see his face. Yeah. Yes. That is very deep because also then Sajid Bhai, that is, you know, that router, like like you said with the Kibla and the Kaaba, the router is actually in one place. There is yeah. one place where that router is. But yeah. it manifests, subhanAllah, it's deep, very deep point. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, this, uh, the, uh, this um, teaching uh, from Molana on, on the true uh, Kibla and Kaaba that's worthy of uh, the human being. Uh, there's a, another level, uh, another angle to look at it. There's a hadith uh, from the Prophet وسلم, that the heart of the believer is the house of the Lord. Qalb al mu'min bayt al rabb That the deal, the qalb or the deal of the mu'min is the house of Allah, is the meaning. Right, My so the, the house of the of the believer. Now he didn't say the Muslim, the mu'min. Yeah, there's no, no, a distinction. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, the house of the person whose heart is full of iman. Yeah, that heart is the Kaaba. That heart is the Kaaba around which the angels. Uh, make tawaf and the celestial bodies that we were talking about earlier, uh, they make tawaf and they prostrate towards that Kaaba. And that's one of the meanings why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the angels to prostrate towards Adam, alayhi salam. First jidu, first judu li Adam. Uh, mm. Prostrate towards Adam. Why? Because he became their Kaaba. Beautiful, beautiful. He became their uh, and prostrating, so so that this is the the potential of the human being, uh, 
to when they rise to their highest their highest calling as the Khalifa of Allah. And, and this, this uh, teaching also is, it's almost like a tafsir of what la ilaha illallah truly means. Mm -hmm. La ilaha illallah, like everything that gets in the way of you making the face of Allah, your Kaaba, that's an ilah that you must turn away from. You must, like we do on the on Hajj, you throw the jamarats. You know, we throw stones at that at those jamarat. So that's something else that we can reflect on. So. Beautiful. 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 Sheikh Mendes, it's uh, such a pleasure to uh, hear you. Alhamdulillah. And, uh, on, on a personal note, I want to share a small story. Sajid what Bhai, happened. it's always good to hear you. <laughs> no, no, no. On, on a personal note, let me tell you what happened. Yeah. So last night I was going to bed. And I'm traveling. I'm not in New Jersey. And I thought I must get up in the morning because I'm staying in a hotel uh, for to listen to the Rumi Circle. And then I saw you in my dream. And I saw you Allah, in the Allah. Rumi Circle. <laughs> Allah, Allah. So, when, when I, <laughs> so when I woke up this morning, you can't, you can't express my joy when I saw you in the chat room. MashaAllah. <laughs> Allah, Allah, Allah gave you a true dream. Allah gave me a true dream. <laughs> it was such a joy when I, when I saw that your name, I mean, my heart, you know, my joy knew no bounds. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Oh, alhamdulillah. Well, I love all of you. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm very happy that you've continued and uh, to study and to talk and discuss. And this is how we're supposed to, you know, engage and grow together as, as brothers and sisters, you know. And uh, so I'm very happy that uh, you're reading uh, the, from the Masnavi. And I'm happy that you know, Brother Mahdi and, and Dr. Abdurrahman are, you know, helping us understand this really deep, deep, deep uh, knowledge. Exactly. Uh, last last week, Brother uh, Mendes, we spoke <clears throat> about what you just mentioned today about the heart. Uh-huh, okay. We well, on it in, in detail, mm -hmm. and I had suggested that maybe this should be one of the, one of the, on one or topics for our maybe one or two day seminars in down the road. Status of a heart of a believer. It's yes. so much material on it and so much to learn from it. Yes. And if one was to internalize uh, as to what the heart is, then, you know, then one would really uh, understand the purpose of life. <clears throat> yes, yes, this is very much needed. May Allah yeah. give us success to do that. There is a verse by Simab Akbar Abadi in, in poetry. He says, Jahan dil hai, wahan wo hai. Or, Jahan wo hai, wahan sab kuch. Magar pehle makam e dil samajne ki zarurat hai. He says, wherever the heart is, that's where he resides. And where he resides, everything for you is right there. Allah. Before, before you understand, you have to learn the status of the heart as to what is the status of the heart. Uh, in, in, in humans. So a heart has a very special place in our being and we really have to understand what 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 the heart means. So you need to really know what is your heart. Learn that's about true. it. Yeah. That's true. Thank you. It's true. Uh, and Brother Mahdi, I see we have Raza with us. Uh, and some others, oh, mashallah, other uh, participants who've given, oh, given good comments in the past. Uh, and we have some sisters too, I think. Sister uh, Hala is here, Shruti, Shruti here. And Hala. Allahu Akbar, Sister Shruti and Hala. Assalamu alaikum, how are you? Uh, Allahu Shruti. Akbar. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not surprised. Assalamu alaikum. I think certain comments should be mandatory. Raza, mashallah, Raza, assalamu alaikum, Raza. Mashallah. Uh, Assalamu uh, alaikum. This is uh, Ali Chaudhary. Mashallah. Mashallah. Uh, I have a question that uh, yeah. Jalaluddin Rumi is known to be the best uh, best read author in the United States. Yes. Yes. I'm sorry. America's best selling poet. That's what yes. They, they yeah, yeah, best selling yeah. poet in the United States is yeah. Jalaluddin yeah. Rumi. Right. And there are quite a few uh, okay. uh, Rumi centers who regularly meet. 
Uh, I don't know. Oh, in in uh, Princeton Junction, there is a one across high school. Yes, thank you. Bye -bye. Yeah, this is, um, uh, yeah, I haven't been there. I don't know if any of us have, have been there. Uh, sometimes, yes, I uh, have been there. Oh, okay, how is it? How is it? Oh, what it's the, uh, very, activities? it's international. They bring you all international, like, uh, presentations of Jalaluddin Rumi in various countries. Mashallah. So this is very beautiful. There you go. Mashallah. Yeah. So this, this is just like see spiritual enlightenment, which has, uh, you know, enlightenment powers which come to you through, you know, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and love of Prophet and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Masha, masha. So I don't know. That's the way it came across me too. Uh, they they had like a Rohani light, mm. and uh, that like uh, I spiritual power, mm. and uh, I have been connected with Ball since my you know graduate time, and uh, uh, his poetry is like. Uh, even no matter where world goes, material, this, that, that, his poetry guides you through your life, whether it is your profession or it is your uh, regular life with each other. So it guides you. And the latest book uh, he wrote was Time, Space and Religion. How did mm. I get connected with all of you in MCGP? Mm -hmm. And what's what's his name? What's the author's name again? Pardon? What's the author's name who wrote Time, Space, and Religion? What's his name? Uh, Dr. Iqbal, Dr. Sal Muhammad Iqbal. Okay, Sal Muhammad, Salman Muhammad Iqbal. Muhammad. No, 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 not not Salman, sir. As I, that was the title oh. given to him by by the British. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah. Oh, he's talking about Alama Iqbal. Uh, Alama yes, Iqbal. Sir. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. 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 Mashallah. Yes. Thank you. Mashallah. So he he is the only person on earth who really went into Jalaluddin Rumi's Kalam to translate. Nobody else did it. Mm, time, space, and religion. Is it available? I'm I'm looking for it. I can't see it. Is it in English? What, what Iqbal? The book, uh, Time, Space, and Religion. Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, it is, uh, uh, yeah, actually, this is in English because Iqbal wrote a paper which he, he was going to present in 1936 to Oxford University. Mm -hmm. And he got sick mm. and he could not go. But uh, his writings at this time, he all the writing on the paper with the pen mm. and all scattered around in his bedroom, close to his bed. That's where he did all his work. Mm. So one of his uh, family members, uh, he was professor of chemical engineering in Birmingham, where I went myself to in England. And then he went back and he found that paper written in his hand that he could not go to present in 1936. He got sick. Mm. So then he wrote a book, Time, Space, and Religion. How happened that we all got, got connected here? And that's the way I got connected Mm -hmm. uh, there is a dentist here. It's right across from high school in Princeton Junction. Dagonali. Thank you. Thank you. I just posted in the chat uh, an article from Muslim Vibe called titled Einstein, Iqbal, and the Concept of Time in Islam. Yeah. So some of you may find it uh, beneficial. Yeah, I was uh, looking for the, the title you, you mentioned, Masha. Uh, oh, yeah, very good. Oh, yeah, so you relate. Yeah, very good. <laughs> so uh, that was the way I found that center that uh, Allah brought in such a manner I could not believe. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. So, so I'm going to have to leave because I have another... 
uh, engagement in uh, a little while. I think we are just uh, about done anyway, Brother Mavi. Yeah, I think we're done. Um, yeah. Okay, okay, mashallah. Would you be able to do a quick dua to conclude, uh, Sheikh? Inshallah, yeah, inshallah, alhamdulillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Al-Fatihi lima ugrik, wal-Khatimi lima sabaq. Nasir al-Haq bil-Haq. Wal-Hadi ila siratika al-Mustaqeem. Wa ala alihi haqqa qadrihi wa miqdarihi al-Azim. Oh Allah, we thank you for this circle. Oh Allah, we thank you for the teachings of Muhammad Jalaluddin. Rumi and Belchi, O oh Allah, we ask that you elevate his rank in paradise. We ask that you have mercy upon him, that you illuminate, increase his grave and his, his uh, maqam and light and barakah. O oh Allah, we ask that you deepen our knowledge uh, of, his, of his words and his, his teachings that you uh, grant us deeper and deeper and deeper understandings, Ya Allah that Amen. you deepen our knowledge of it, and that you give us success, O oh Allah, to live it, to, to live and to practice and to implement and to be uh, channels through which his wisdom uh, reaches uh, people around us and beyond. O oh Allah, we ask for your forgiveness. We ask for your mercy. We ask for your bounty, O oh Allah, your treasures, your provision from what is halal and tayyib. O oh Allah, we ask that you fulfill and that you take care of our needs, O oh Allah. We are weak, we are poor, O oh Allah, we are ignorant, O oh Allah, we are uh, incapable, Ya Allah. We, there's no power and there's no change for transformation except through you, the most exalted, the Almighty, O oh Allah. O oh Allah, we ask you through all of your names, O oh Allah, to bless us in our deen, uh, to bless us in our dunya to bless us in our akhirah, O Allah, bless our time, bless our wealth, O Allah, bless our health, O Allah, bless our families, bless our neighbors, O Allah, we ask that you, uh, that you grant us uh, success to do only what you love and what you are pleased with, Ya Allah, in public and in private, in our worldly affairs, in our religious affairs, Ya Allah, we pray that you lift the uh, coronavirus pandemic from the world, Ya Allah, that you replace it with uh, health and with medicine. And we ask, O oh Allah, that we live, that you change us, change our hearts and change our habits so that we live in a way, Ya Allah, that is beloved to you, that does not cause corruption in the land and the sea. O oh Allah, we thank you for Brother Mahdi, and we thank you for Dr. Abdurrahman and all the brothers and sisters that are with us. O oh Allah, we ask that you complete our lights. We ask that you grant us the, the akibla and the, the Kaaba that is pleasing to you, Ya Allah, that you grant us the Qibla of Islam, Iman, and Ihsan, and the Kaaba of your face, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask that you purify our hearts completely, O oh Allah. Amen. That you sharpen our minds. Sharpen our intellects, Ya Allah, the strengthen our bodies and pure and purify our souls. Mm -hmm. Oh Allah, we ask you for every good that Prophet Muhammad asked for, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and that your righteous service asked for, and we ask your protection from every harm that he and your righteous servants saw protection from. You are the one who helps in every affair, and you are the one who enables us to attain our goals. La hawla wa la illa Allah bless our teachers and our parents, forgive our ancestors, Ya Allah, our believing ancestors, O Allah, and bless our children and the children of our children, keep their feet firm on your path to the day of judgment, Ya Rabbil Alameen, and make Ameen. us from the helpers and the lovers of Isa ibn Maryam upon his return, and the helpers of Imam Mahdi al-Muntadr, alayhi salam, Ya Allah, uh, in our generation, and, and for our offspring, to be among them after us to the day of judgment. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad and Nabi al Umi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Subhana rabbika rabbil aizati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi rahmatika ya rahmatika.
Thank you, mashallah. This is a, the you. best way to start the day. Alhamdulillah. After, after Fajr, to listen to these, uh, these teachings. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Jazakallah khair, everybody. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Badafis. Thank you, Sheikh. This. Thanks, everyone. Mashallah. Inshallah, we meet again next week. Jazakallah khair. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam.